Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking in the Third Testament of the Bible. We're going to go down here and look for the word temple in the Third Testament of the Bible. That's right, we're going to try to get some hints and clues from the scripture on what the Third Temple will be like using the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, if you want, you can look down in the description and get a link to the Third Testament of the Bible. There's both a PDF down there that you can download to your media device. And there's also an audio book that you can listen to over there on YouTube. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to look for the times in the Third Testament of the Bible that the word temple is listed. And we're going to bounce some of this off of what we find over there in the King James Version of the Bible. And if it's the Father's will, we're also going to talk on the Shepherd of Hermas. Believe it or not, it tells you how that tower-shaped temple is going to be built over there in the Shepherd of Hermas. You could also find links to that scripture down in the description. Just look for the Shepherd of Hermas. But we have done several classes on that construction. So if you want to, just jump over to our channel and look under the videos you should watch and look for a playlist called Similitudes. And you can hear classes we did on the construction of the Third Temple by way of a vision that Hermes saw of the tower. All right, so let's jump right into it. What I want to do is just pull out some highlights to give us an understanding of what this temple is going to be like. Let me start right here at the second time that is actually listed. This is down here in chapter four. It says, Master, why did you not choose your manifestation in this time in one of those large temples of churches where they might have offered you rich altars, normal ceremonies worthy of you? Now, this is what we're going to find out in this in this um, this video is that the third temple is not like the first two temples at all. The first three temples, if you consider that one out there, that tabernacle built out there by Moses as one, it was wasn't those temples that were materialistic is not like the third temple at all now this one down here coming out of chapter 8 is talking about the hundred and forty four thousand I'll start right there at verse 7 he says when these people are strong and numerous they will attract to themselves the attention of their fellow men for the cleanliness of their works and the sincerity of their worship must surprise humanity. Then men will ask, who are these who without temples know to pray in this way? And so what it's telling us here again is that the third temple is not a brick and mortar temple. It's saying that these guys, these 144,000 are not going to have a temple that they go to worship in as they did in, in the past. And so this, along with the cleanliness of their works and sincerity of their worship, is going to surpri surprise the majority of humanity who are now looking for a materialistic um, brick and mortar temple to be built. All right, now jumping down here to chapter 14, verse 26 says, My doctrine teaches you a perfect form of worship, spiritual and pure toward the Father. For the spirit of humanity has arrived without realizing it at the threshold of the Lord's temple, where it will enter to feel my presence, to hear my voice through his conscience, and to see me in the light that descends upon its mind. So now this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the third temple is, you know, something that man really can't see you see right here how it's talking about without realizing it they're at the threshold of the Lord's temple not Solomon's temple not the second temple we're talking about the Lord's temple that temple that's never going to be destroyed that temple that's going to last forever but notice it says right here the threshold 
of that temple. Because if we jump over here in chapter 11 of Revelations, verse 19 says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there was lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. This is talking about after the seventh seal has been opened. And so that's why it's mentioning over there in the third testament how we're at the threshold because this temple hasn't been opened yet from what we read in the second testament of the bible i think there's no surprise that the third temple will be built on the hearts and minds of humanity but there's a lot of religious groups that want to teach and a lot of people want to think that that temple has already been opened yet. But as we can see over here in Revelations and even the Third Testament backs it up as well, is that we're not quite there yet. Um, we, the temple will be our bodies one day or our bodies will be the temple one day. But we have to get to that seventh seal to get there. Now, we've done classes on the, the, the seven seals before. If you want to check our channel. We are in the sixth seal now um, based on what we read in scripture. You know, I'm not guessing. I don't, I don't, I don't guess at all over here at Hermes Academy. I, I use scripture um, to, to back up what I say or I just don't say it. Um, so, But you can check that class over there um, that we did. If you look for the uh, seven seals, you can see how we're actually in the sixth seal at the end of the sixth seal waiting for you know this this earthquake in the seventh seal and then that's when we will get the um, third temple all right now jumping down here in chapter 16 which talks about the the divine law the commandments and such over there in the third testament of the bible verse 25 says i come to reconstruct my temple a temple without walls or towers for it is in the hearts of men right so like we said this is no surprise to anybody when you jump over here to first corinthians in the king james version of the bible uh, chapter 3 verse 16 says know ye that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple ye are talking about how we are the temple of God now you know um, now this is not to say that they're not going to actually go over and physically try to build a, a temple over there in Jerusalem you know you know, a lot of people believe that there's going to be a war that's going to break out over this third temple. But the purpose of this class is for us to understand that, you know, they fight as they will, carry on as they may. That really has nothing to do with the Lord's temple. The Lord's temple is built on the hearts of humanity. Like we read over here in the third testament of the Bible, the temple is built without walls or towers, for it is in the hearts of man. The third temple will be in the hearts of man and and as they're trying to own that real estate over there in Jerusalem I don't know what they plan to do if they plan to sell it to the father when he shows up or plan to make him pay rent or whatever but because they actually own the rights to that land over there but you understand that the, the temple the third temple was actually going to be on the hearts of man so they're wasting their time you know, but, you know, I wish that was all they were wasting. You know, they're wasting bullets. They're wasting, wasting bombs. And, you know, they're wasting a lot of lives over there with that, you know, brick and mortar temple that they're trying to trying to build over there. All right. Let me jump over here to chapter 17 of the Third Testament of the Bible. It's called the New Way of Worshiping God. It's a very important chapter over there in the Third Testament of the Bible, as you can imagine, talking about the new way of worshiping God, like I said. But it's, it's, it really talks about spirit to spirit communication which is extremely important when it comes to the way we worship the Father. But let me jump down here to verse 159. It says, You can communicate with your Father wherever you are, for the place is of no consequence. It can be at the top of the mountain, or if you find yourself in the depths of a valley, in the commotion of a city, in the peace of your home, or in the midst of a struggle. If you seek me in the interior of your sanctuary, in the midst of the deep silence of your elevation, the doors of the universal and invisible temple will be opened instantly so that you can feel yourself truly in the house of the Father, which exists 
in each spirit talking about that temple how it exists in each of our spirit now this this kind of goes against what we said a few minutes ago how the temple wasn't open this is not talking in futuristic tense this is talking in present day and i think i don't believe there's a contradiction here it may have been a misunderstanding on my part but you know what i attributed this to is the fact okay yes the third temple is open presently, but a few minutes ago we were talking about all of humanity. So how many people out of 7.5 billion people, 7.7 .7 it might be now, how many, how many people out of the 7 or 8 billion people that are on the planet realize, you know, that the temple is open now. And, you know, so it is open to, you know, everybody, I guess, but there's only a few that will recognize this and be able to take it advantage of the fact that the temple is open whereas all of humanity no they're all going to find out at one time you know um the majority of the people are not going to find out until the day of the lord or the hour of the conscious or that great earthquake or the sky crack some big global event is what's going to wake everybody else up to the, the the fact that the temple is opened but what it's talking about right here in chapter 17 is how we all have this ability to communicate with him already Notice that the doors to this temple are universal and invisible, opened instantly so that you can feel yourself truly in the house of the Father. And for a reference to that, and I don't plan on referencing each one of these, but I will, I will go over here to this one and reference the third temple over here in Revelation. Over here in chapter 7 and verse 15, it says, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. This is talking about the people that come through great tribulation. As you know, we have a tribulation to go through in the earth. And those that are actually planning on being saved will, will actually, you know, survive the tribulation. Because that, that's what saved mean. You know, people have given it their own definition of saved. The word saved it, I don't know what they how they really define it when you ask them they kind of start bumbling and, and stuff they don't really give a definite answer but to be saved means to survive the tribulation you know saved from death of this tribulation there's going to be a few people that's going to be here after it's all said and done and these people who have made it through this tribulation up here that is talking about these are the ones that will serve in the temple but what I wanted to bring out is how it says day and night day and night we understand that that temple does not close it's open 24 hours a day and i used to wonder about that you know before the third testament came in to clear a lot of things up how is this temple going to be open you know all through the night and, you know never closes or whatever but when we understand that it's a spiritual temple built on our hearts and in our spirits then sure you know i can wake up at 2 33 in the morning you know needing to commune with the father and i could go into the temple and you know spend some time with him in there i don't have to wait till the doors open down there or travel all the way to jerusalem to do so all right now staying over here in chapter 17 verse 174 says there in the purest part of your being in the spirit will be where I will write my law in this air. It will be there that I make my voice heard and where I will build my temple for that which does not exist in the spirit might as well not exist. OK, now this right here um, is pointing to that new covenant. You hear about how we live on a new covenant if you've ever spent you know time down at the church they talk about how we have a new covenant with the laws written on our heart well that's what it's talking about here what is what is referring to is how our conscience will become dominant once again uh, just just to touch on a little bit of this story i don't want to get into it too much but um 
when humanity was first put down here on earth by way of Adam all the way up through Noah and maybe even in Abraham's time, people relied on their conscience in order to know what we were supposed to do, to know the difference between right and wrong. There was no, no laws written. Moses hadn't came yet to write down the laws. But then when you go back and you look, you know, in some of the scripture, there's a lot of times you can see people were following the laws that Moses had written. And my wife brought it out one time. She was like, if the laws weren't written down, how were they following them? And, you know, I was like, where they didn't. And she pointed out, yes, they are. She pointed out, you know, how they were doing certain things according to according to the law, like Jacob and Abraham and Isaac were seemed to have been following the law even before they were written down. Well, what it, how it turns out is that somewhere between the time of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and those years that they spent there in Egypt, they lost communication with the conscious. It's like Egypt did something to them in there to where they forgot about the laws and the rules. And it was after Egypt that the laws had to be written down for them to go by. And like in the New Testament, what it says is that the laws are a schoolmaster. Well, what it turns out is is that by following the laws here in, you know, this late in the game, 2020, when we start to follow the laws, what that does is it helps us to to become conscious beings again. It kind of closes the gap between our disobedience, which separates us from our conscience. It kind of gets us close enough to the law, gets us close enough to our conscience to where we can start to hear our conscience again. The purest part of their being in their spirit, yeah, that is your conscious. Your conscious is is basically um, the truth center. That's the obedience center. That that your conscious is that place where um, righteousness, you know, originates from inside of you. It tells you the difference between right and wrong. He says, it will be there that I will make my voice heard and where I will build my temple. So, so if we were taking notes, we'd write that down. The temple will be built on the purest parts of our conscience. Looking down here in 175, he says, and so though you raise enormous temples in my honor, though you offer feasts and ceremonies full of splendor, your offerings will not reach me for they are not of the spirit. All external worship bears in it vanity and ostentation. In contrast, the quiet offering, that which the world never sees, and that you offer me spirit to spirit, that reaches me because of its humility, its sincerity, its truth. In a word, because it proceeds from the spirit. Now, this goes along with what we read over there in one of the prophets. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it, it appears as though in one of the prophets, the father said he wanted nothing to do with our offerings anymore. He wanted nothing to do with our feast days and our Sabbath days. Do away with it, he said over there. Um, well, this is why, you know, it, it ain't so much that he wanted us to all of a sudden become disobedient or that he had somehow changed his mind the father never changes but what it was it was man start making it all about rights and start making it all about ceremonies full of ostentation um, and vanity and that kind of thing and and what he's saying here he kind of clarifies that what we read over there what he's saying here is that the spirit communication the spirit offer the spiritual offerings is is what he desires offer me spirit to spirit that reaches me uh, because of its humility sincerity and truth so you know we can put on all of this pomp and grandeur in order to try to please the father and all of these gold filled gold laid temples and all of that but you know he really is not interested the father's not interested in all of that kind of stuff at all somebody needs to go down there and tell the pope that you know that the father really ain't interested in that kind of worship he's really interested in sincere truthful humble type worship that you would do probably in the privacy of your own home amongst your own family members and that kind of thing we're talking about the third temple here now that may have been how they did it over there in the the second temple in the first temple you know was you know had all this stuff going on but those were like we said a few minutes ago that was the temple of solomon that was the, the tabernacle that moses built 
You know, it was Ezra and Nehemiah that went over there and built the second temple or whatever. The, the, the third temple is built by the Father. The real temple was built by the Father, and it's going to be quite different. Okay, now this is over here in chapter 23 of the scripture called, um, of the Third Testament of the Bible called Inspirations and Revelations of God. I wanted to point this part out. It says in verse 58, he says, When from the hearts of humanity the temple of the Holy Spirit is elevated to the infinite, there in his bosom will arise new revelations which will become greater as the spirits ascend further talking about you know uh, humanity again this is you know it, it may be pointing to after the tribulation the post-tribulation era where everybody on the planet will be attuned to this tribulation will be attuned to this temple will be you know dwelling in this spiritual temple but you know when he says that when it when this temple is elevated to the infinite he says, then will arise new revelations that will become greater as the spirits are sent further. Uh, we're supposed to be able to do a lot of stuff already. And so, you know, when we get this temple up and built, you know, elevated to its infinite, there's going to arise new revelations. This is stuff coming from science. This is this is a lot of stuff, a lot of information. Uh, we get a lot of information from the Third Testament of the Bible. I, I would advise that you, you know, go ahead over there and check it out. It's um, some very deep stuff. It's quite entertaining, too. You know, if you wanted to grab that audio book and just listen to it, it's better than television. I promise you, ain't nothing on television better than this book right here. Now, these these verses up here are coming out of chapter 28, which is called Death, Dying, and Awakening in the Beyond. Yep, see, now that's what I'm talking about, you know, what what is it like after you die? What does it mean to die? What what where what does your body go? What does your spirit go after you've left this earth? This this scripture right here it actually tells you you know it tells you where your body goes, you know how your spirit operates and all of that kind of stuff. So like I said, it's some really deep stuff over here in this one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna back it up so you can read up there in verse sixty if you want to. But I'm gonna start down here in sixty one. He says the sanctuary of which I have just told you is that of the conscious that temple that none may profane the temple in which God dwells and from which his voice and his light issue okay so now here is talking about the conscious in relationship to our temple and I think it's important to note right here, he says that temple in which God dwells. So the conscious is the temple in which God dwells in. Um, and, and of course, you know, we, we, we say that loosely because, you know, it ain't so much that the father is in us. You know, we're in him. You know, because, you know, he is he is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is in everything he's created, include, including that tree and that rock over there. But he's also in us, too. And you say, well, where is he? If you were to actually, you know, go inside of yourself and try to find out where he's at, where he's at exactly in there, he's in your conscious. That temple, that temple that we call the conscious or that temple that we're finding out is our conscious. That's where he dwells and from which his voice and his light issue. So when we hear our conscious talking to us, we're actually hearing the father talking to us. Now, I'm going to stay down here in the same chapter, chapter 28, but I'm going to come all the way down here to verse 66. You can hit the pause button if you want to read it, or like I said, go over there and get the audio book or get that PDF down here in the description. It's free. You can download it to your cell phone or download it to your computer. Or But down here in verse 66, he says, disciples, humanity, prepare yourselves in this life for that instant so that when your spirit presents itself at the threshold of the temple of the conscious you do not make that temple a courtroom for the spiritual pain would be so great that there is no physical pain comparable yep that's right guys hell doesn't exist 
No, hell, hell doesn't exist. You know, we've always been taught that, you know, we were going to a place, you know, where there was, you know, a lake of fire or we were going to get burned. No, you know, our bodies is going to be down here on the earth. It's going to be ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Once we die, our spirit gets separated from our bodies and our spirit won't feel the pain. Even if they do put us in a crematorium somewhere, you know, where our spirit is going to be in another place going through its own pain. And that's what it's talking about right here is that we prepare ourselves that, you know, we, we start to embrace the father's laws, his rules, start to do charitable deeds and, you know, start making up for, you know, the harms that we've done and removing those stains from our spirit so that you know when we do pass on when we do go on to the afterlife after we've you know separated after our material flame has been extinguished you know going before our conscience won't be like going before a courtroom why because he says for that spiritual pain would be so great that there is no physical pain comparable and this this is kind of why they say it's like hell it's not a it's not a, a hell like they taught us but it's going to be painful when our conscience starts to bear on us and you know let us know uh, you know all of the bad things that we've done in life it's, it's going to be it's going to be really 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 painful but it's a spiritual pain it's not a physical pain like fire it just feels like spiritual fire now down here in chapter 31 called redemption and external salvation uh, verse 62 says in contrast I see that men in spite of their religions that claim to be telling the truth their hearts dead to faith and dead to love and light they believe that by praying in their temples and attending their rites their salvation is assured yet I tell you that the world must know that salvation can be reached only by the realization of acts of love and charity so this is what I was just talking about about the preparation um, we really need to do acts of love and charity if you know we want to remove some of the stains that we've done you, you think you know we we've done a lot of bad stuff in our life because you know primarily because we wasn't aware of the father's rules for a long time I know I wasn't I was almost 40 years old when I realized that I was supposed to be obeying the commandments in the first place you know um, but you know and it's and so there's no way I can go back in and make up for you know the times when I broke the Sabbath day or the times when you know I uh, bear false witness or the time I took the name the Lord's name in vain or whatever but I can't make up for that stuff through acts of love and charity and and so we all should be looking for ways to do just this acts of love and charity because what is it saying up here? Those that, you know, are praying in their brick and mortar temples, uh, attending to their rites, you know, they're, they're, they're not getting salvation through that. You know, there's a lot of people who believe they are. They believe all they got to do is go down there to the church, go down there to the temple. And, you know, that's all they have to do. And their salvation is good. Again, I say saved from what? Because if you want to make it through this tribulation, if you want to be physically saved and survive the tribulation, it's going to take acts of love and charity and obedience to the law. We don't want to leave that one out. All right. Now, here in chapter 32 is called Incarnation, Nature and Duties of Human Beings. Down here in verse 68, it says the pain that weighs down on men of this era is leading them step by step without realizing it to the doors of the inner sanctuary before which unable to go further. They will ask, Lord, where are you? And from the interior of the temple, the sweet voice of the master will answer, here I am where I have always dwelled in your conscience. See, this is important stuff, guys. We're talking about the third temple. You know, there's people that's interested in the third temple. Well, here is where the third temple is. This is what's going on here. So let's look at this verse closely because it says the pain that weighs down on men of this era. This see what we live in now is judgment day. This is why you see a lot of crying going on, a lot of anguish, a lot of pain, a lot of people getting hurt, a lot of people getting shot, a lot of play 
plagues going on, a lot of war, and a lot of bad stuff is going on for humanity. A lot of people hungry and such. It is this pain, this pain right here that do that's doing what? Leading them step by step to the doors of the inner sanctuary. This pain is purifying us. Again, we did a class um, that you guys can look up on our channel called Purified Through Pain. It is this pain that's actually helping us to reach this inner sanctuary. That's why the scripture says for us to bear our cross with love because, you know, that cross is painful sometimes. And but it is that pain that is doing what? Leading us step by step to the inner sanctuary. Now, if you remember, the, you may not be familiar with the, the sanctuary. I know I, I ain't an expert on it by, by any means, but there was a veil on the inside of there. Um, you had to you had to, go, to go to the Holy of Holies. You had to go through a, a special veil or something like that that most people weren't allowed to. And so when we get to that veil and we say, where are you? He says, from that interior temple, the sweet voice of the master will say, here I am, where I have always dwelled in your conscience. So, so getting a little bit of understanding here, you know, like I always say, I'm a student. I learn from these videos just like you guys do. That conscience is in, in the Holy of Holies. That conscience, the conscience is in, the, in there by the mercy seat, in there where the Ark of the Covenant is at. Now, staying in the same chapter down here in verse 74 is talking about the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is, you know, of course, the same thing. But I wanted to bring this verse out back up here. 73 is, is telling us what we have to do. It says, who does good fills my presence within him, just as he who is humble or who sees his brother in every one of his fellow men. In your spirit exists the temple of the Holy Spirit. That enclosure is indestructible. There are no strong winds nor hurricanes that are capable of destroying it. It is invisible and intangible to the gaze of humans. Its columns are the desire to overcome yourself with goodness. Its dome is the grace that the Father pours out over his children. Its and its doors the love of the divine master for all who knock at my door are touching the heart of the celestial mother. Now, that's a mouthful down there, but, you know, it's, it's important stuff because he's telling us what we have to do here. We have to do good. When we do good, we'll feel his presence. And then right here, he says we have to be humble. You know, we have to be humble and we also have to see our brother in every one of our fellow men, you know. So when we're walking in, you know, the homeless guy or the, the, the guy down on his luck or even the prisoner or the guy at the, at the hospital, you know, we have to look out for our brother and see them as, you know, don't you know, just look at them, you know, as somebody that's, you know, not doing too well. But we have to treat them like they were our brother and go and let, try to lift them up. When we do this, what it says, in your spirit exists the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And it's an indestructible temple, can't be harmed by strong winds or hurricanes. Um, it's invisible and intangible to the human gaze. Nobody can look upon this temple and say whether you have it or not. You know, nobody, nobody knows if you're in that temple or not. It says, his columns are the desire to overcome yourself with goodness. His dome is the grace that the Father pours out over his children. Then it says that his doors are love of the Divine Mother. Now, there is a chapter in here that talks about the Divine Mother. Turns out she is Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of the Messiah, the mother of Yahushua HaMashiach all those 2,000 years ago. She was a spiritual being like the Messiah was. She, you know, she came down here like he did to do a life's mission, which was to bear, you know, to, to give birth to the Messiah. But after she went on, she went on to a higher place and took her rightful place in, in the celestial. And she is actually our divine mother. I did a Mother's Day class last year on, you know, our, our true mother. And that's Mother Mary. You should check that out. Um, if you look for Mother's Day, um, you probably find that class there to let it let you know how important she is and what role she plays in humanity. She's kind of like our protector. And that, but you know, take out that class. I'm gonna go on.
down here in verse 75, he says, Here, disciples, is the truth of the church of the Holy Spirit, so that you be not of those who become confused by false interpretations. The temples of marble were but a symbol, and of them not one stone will be left upon another. Now, and this is what we heard over there. The Messiah told us that, you know, all of those buildings are going to be knocked down. That's what that big earthquake is about. They talk about that global earthquake, you know, that you hear about over there in Revelations. When you go, when you go over there in other books like Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all of the prophets, they talk about how this earthquake is going to shake down every building on the planet. It's even going to flatten mountains and move islands out of their places. In the Third Testament, it says that three quarters of the earth is going underwater. And so when this is over here talking about how there's not going to be any of these buildings standing in this place, it's no doubt they're all going to be shaken apart. And so what he's saying here is don't be confused like them guys thinking that the temple, the third temple is going to be made of brick and mortar. It's not, you know, it's not going to be that at all, even though they're going to be doing a little fancy dance over there in Jerusalem. We read over here in 6 and 19 of uh, 1 Corinthians is saying the temple of the Holy Ghost is our body. Verse 19 says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own so don't be confused by those guys over there thinking that it's a brick and mortar temple no this is the temple of the Holy Ghost if you if you are confused by those who thinking that it's going to be a brick and mortar temple this is what you're going to be waiting for when you jump over here to first Thessalonians chapter 2 and 3 he says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God so for those who are waiting for a brick and mortar temple this is what they're gonna get you know they you know this guy right here the son of perdition you know the man of sin that's who's gonna be over there like I said they, they they're probably gonna end up building that building over there you know that's a big real estate project you know that they wanna that they wanna take on they already got project managers on that kind of stuff they even got a model of it over there and but when they do if and when they do get it constructed this is who's going to be sitting there waiting on them this is this is who the man of the man of sin or the son of perdition says he opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God yep that's that's who's going to be sitting over there but you know we, the ones who are understanding over here, you know, we, we're understanding that it, the third temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This temple is built in us. This temple is already in us. You know, we're not waiting for, you know, the earthquake or the day of the Lord or the hour of the conscience to convince us. You know, we, we're going to talk to the Father, Spirit, the Spirit. Now we say our prayers silently, communing, to his, communing with him, mm -hmm. with our spirits and such. Don't be, don't be confused by all of that marble and all of that other stuff that's going on, a bunch of grand jury stuff. Could you imagine? Down here in verse 76, he says, I wish that in your interior altar the flame of faith burns always, and that you understand that with your works you are building the foundations where one day a great sanctuary will stand. I hold all humanity on trial and in preparation within their diverse ideas for to all, I will give a part of the construction of my temple. So here it is talking about the altar here. Now, I'm probably going to do another class like this on the word altar. So you guys go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit that bell button, you know, so when that class comes out, you guys can catch it. But he's talking about how the altar is also within us. He says an interior altar talking about the brazen altar that altar that the flame was supposed to burn at all times and never go out that one is interior too but he says as a humanity we are building the foundations where one day a great sanctuary will stand I hold all humanity on trial and in preparation within our diverse ideas see this is what humanity is going through 
you know, it, you know the author, the father is not the author of our pain and all of this bad stuff that's going on. It's a man that's doing all of this stuff. He's either going to create this earthquake, you know. Some some believe that he's going to do so by way of a nuclear bomb placed in the wrong place on the planet that's going to cause a global earthquake. Like I said, it's going to destroy two thirds of the land mass, and but through these trials the father you know he's going to have a few hundred thousand people maybe a few million people that is going to be here and they're going to take advantage of this temple they're going to they're going to be you know of and in this temple like we said a few minutes ago the pain is what's going to get us there all right, so down here in chapter 37 of the Third Testament of the Bible called Correct Understanding of the Biblical Text, he says, I am rebuilding the temple that I referred to when I said to my disciples who marveled, contemplating the temple of Solomon. Verily I say to you that of it there shall not be one stone left upon another, but I will reconstruct it in three days talking about Solomon's temple there some call it the second temple because if you remember uh, uh, Solomon's temple had been destroyed one time by Nebuchadnezzar and then uh, Nehemiah and Ezekiel Nehemiah and Ezra and them guys had went back in and rebuilt it but it still you know makes sense to refer to it as Solomon's temple Verse 24 says I meant that an external worship regardless of how sumptuous it may seem to mankind will disappear from the heart of men in order to raise it in its place the true spiritual temple of my divine in the third era or that is to say the third day in which I shall finish reconstructing my temple yep talked about that at the beginning of this video how the temple is about to be constructed for all of humanity in the third era the third era started way back in there in 1866 or 1884 so the third temple has been available for anybody that wanted to take part in it all the way back those hundred and so years but remember that it's when that seventh seal is open that it's going to be finished that all of it's going to be done you know everybody's going to know about the third temple then not just the few that's watching this video and the few that around the world that are spiritualized or whatever it's going to be everybody la di da everybody's going to know about the third temple at the seventh seal all right let's jump down here to chapter 38 the three divine revelations and the seven seals Yep. The three divine revelations, what that's talking about is how you have the Old Testament, the New Testament, and now you have the Third Testament. This, um, the Third Testament is the third revelation. And then it, this chapter also talks about the seven seals. And like we said, we gave a class on this not too long ago. You guys can check it out. Now, it was an educational class, especially for me to understand, you know, how these seals are working um, and how it is that we are in the sixth seal. But, you know, after we got the class done, it's pretty clear to know where we're at. But let me start down here in verse 27, uh, because this is some important stuff. He says, I do not come to disown any of the words I spoke to you in the past. On the contrary, I come to duly fulfill them and give them their just explanation. Just as in those times I said to the Pharisees who believed that Jesus had come to destroy the law, do not think that I have come to counsel the law or the prophets. On the contrary, I comply with them. How could I have disowned that law or those prophecies if they were the foundation of the temple that in three eras was to be constructed in the hearts of this humanity and was the announcement of my coming to the world? Talking about the law, we talked about that a few minutes ago, how important the law is for the third temple. And so what he's saying right here is the law is the foundation for the third temple. Remember that the law is our schoolmaster that helps us to get back to where we become conscious beings. We can't have the law written on our hearts until we have the laws written on our forehead and on our hands. Once we get them written on our foreheads and on our hands, then we can think about them being written on our heart and once they become written on our heart then the third temple is created right we've learned that in this video that the, the temple 
and the conscious go hand in hand. Well, once we become, once we can become conscious beings again, we can fully take advantage of this third temple, as the law is the foundation of the third temple. All right, we're going to jump all the way down here to chapter 47 of the Third Testament of the Bible, which is materialism and spiritualism. Let's start at 21. He says, the spiritualized know that the omnipotent is in all, that the world, the universe, and the infinite are saturated with my essence and my presence. He who conceives of me and recognizes me in this way is a living temple of God and will no longer materialize the manifestations of the spirit with symbols and forms. Okay, I keep talking about how we've done a lot of classes on our channel. You can check classes we did on materialism and spiritualism. But what he's talking about here is how important for us to understand that he is omnipotent, meaning he's all powerful and is in all he's in the whole world and everything he's created every tree every bug every rock everything that the father created has his essence inside of it and around it and he says he's even he's even saturated the infinite we can't even wrap our minds around that saturating the infinite with his essence and presence but you know we want to because why he says right here in 22, he who conceives me and recognizes me in this way is a living temple of God. So that's part of how we become the living temple of, of the Father is by recognizing that he is in all. He is all. He is in all. And you see right here, then it goes on to say, will no longer materialize the manifestations of the spirits with symbols and forms. Yeah, we're going to get away from all of the idolatrous stuff. You know, all of the pictures of Jesus on the wall and the statues and the figurines and the churches and the pomp and the grandeur and the robes and all of that kind of stuff is going away is what he's talking about right there. Now, let's jump all the way down here to chapter 56, which is the triumph and recognition of the spiritual work of Christ. This subsection is called the power of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to start up here at verse 14. He says, a new era has unfolded before mankind. It is the era of light whose presence indicates a halt along the spiritual path of all men. This will enable them to awaken, meditate, and rid themselves of their heavy burdens of traditions, fanaticisms, and errors in order to arrive later at a new life. Some sooner and others later, all religions and sects will be arriving before the invisible temple, before the temple of the Holy Spirit which is present in my work, firm as a column which rises towards infinity, awaiting all the peoples and lineages. Now, this part right here where he says he rises like a column towards the infinity. See, this right here points over to the Tower of the Shepherd of Hermas. Let me jump over to that book a little bit right here. In, in, in the Shepherd of Hermas, let me talk about this book just for a half a second. In, it's, it's called the Shepherd of Hermas, and it's broken down into three parts. You have the part visions, which Hermas is in a dream state, and he's shown a vision. Then in the second part, it's called commands, where Hermas is given a few commands that he has to follow. And like the law, it helps to bring Hermas closer to being a spiritual person, a spiritual individual, where he can start to take advantage advantage of things that he couldn't do you know as a sinful person and after that after he familiarizes himself with the the commands he actually is shown a uh, similitudes where he gets to talk face to face with an angel the angel of repentance this is the first book i've ever read where an angel is actually you know i you know co-author or maybe not maybe even the author of the book you know but he spends a lot of time with the angel of repentance who shows him you know how the tower is constructed and how it is built but i want to come over here and show you just a few things in here talking about this tower because the tower is the temple the temple is the tower and as the temple is built in the hearts and on the conscience of man 
you can imagine man has to prepare himself for that construction to take place. And in the Shepherd of Hermas, in the vision part, you have a symbol of the church that comes in and starts to show Hermas how this tower is being built, how it's built out of stones. The stones represent humanity and mankind, and it's given in a way where each stone um, has a different shape or different uh Thing about it that represents the flaws of humanity I'll take this one for instance right here he says some of these were rough others had clefts in them and others were white and round not proper for the building of the tower now I've done we've done several classes over here out of similitudes my wife and I still have this one class to do out of visions and we would actually have done a verse by verse class out of the whole entire book so you guys can check that out on our channel or like I said look down in the description so you can you can you can you know get a um, a um, PDF of the Shepherd of Hermes or you can listen to an audio book you know if you like you can find you know links to those down there in the description but we've gone down through these and you know we can see like to have clefts in them if I remember correctly the person that has clefts is someone who holds resentments against one another like you know somebody may have harmed you and instead of forgiving that person you kind of hold that you kind of hold stuff against them well the Shepherd of Hermes tells you why and shows you how those resentments will actually get you kicked out of the tower there will be no resentment people in this tower there will be no resentful people in the temple that's what the tribulation is about is this going to cleanse the earth for all of these rough people all of those all, all of these different people with these different flaws will be given the opportunity through the form of baptism and you know meditation and prayer confessing of the sins they will be given the opportunity to cleanse away a lot of these flaws and stuff they have so that they will be able to go into this tower but some of them won't you see down here where it says some of them rolled into the desert places yeah, those, those people will be lost. They won't be able to go into the tower. These are people who, you know, they don't have a lot of faith. Some people are blasphemous, won't won't be able to go into the tower. People who are doubtful, um, you, you know, they won't be able to go into the tower. And it, and it goes on. Now, this one right here, these white and round stones, these are important. Like I said, go over there and check this out. I don't want to talk on this too much. But these white and round stones are extremely important. Why? Because this is the majority of us. These, This is the majority of us. We're white because we are innocent. It has nothing to do with race or skin color or anything like that. We're white because we are innocent. That's what the white part means. We are round because of the riches of this world is clouding our faith, is clouding our minds, is separating us. You remember how we're supposed to separate ourselves from the world and separate ourselves from worldly stuff? So this round part, this, that's the worldly part that's getting in our way and we have to, we, we're, we're going to have to be parsed and cut away that's another significant part of the tribulation especially that earthquake part it's going to knock when it knocks down everybody's building it's going to take away everybody's materialism all of that you know stuff that we love so much you know is going to go away and then we're going to have the opportunity to go into this tower and into the temple well again that's the shepherd of Hermes this is what Hermes Academy is about this is why you hear us talking about Hermes Academy because in my opinion with the third testament included and the King James version of the Bible included I'm still going to go ahead and say I'm, I'm, I'm hope I don't get smited for saying it but I believe that the shepherd of Hermes is the most important book on the planet guys the thing about the third testament it has a lot of knowledge wisdom and understanding in it it helps us to understand a lot of stuff but we have to have the understanding of the shepherd of Hermes or we're not going into the tower if we have hate if we have anger if we have distrust if you know if, if, if we're doing this stuff let me let me let me jump over I've been clicking down through here so you can see all of the times that um, 
word tower is mentioned if, if you push the pause button you could actually see all of the times that the word tower is mentioned there but I'm gonna show you one last thing about the Shepherd of Hermas and then I'm gonna get back over there into the third testament get back into our study and that's over here and in, in the in the similitudes of what Hermas is shown he's also shown these 24 women 12 of them are considered uh, good spirits and 12 of them are bad spirits and here they are these are the spirits that uh dwell in man you hear over in the bible over in the king james version it says we fight not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers but he, so here are those powers and this is a lot of what we learn over there in the shepherd of Hermas is how these powers are actually harming mankind and if we can't get ourselves away from these powers and put on these good powers and for those listening on SoundCloud let me read them off perfidiciousness incontinence infidelity pleasure sadness malice lust anger lying foolishness pride and hatred for those those if any of those are in your heart what the promise is is or what the what the prophecy is is that they are going to go and get the rest of them like for instance if you have lying in your heart they're going to go get the rest of these and bring the rest of these women in in order to basically get you killed. They're going to get you destroyed. They're going to take you to a place where it's going to actually cause you to die and not inherit the earth. You're going to get recycled. But the ones we have to put on are faith, self-restraint, power, long-suffering, simplicity, lack of evil, purity, cheerfulness, trust intelligence harmony and love so those are the good ones we have to put on we have to get out of the bad ones again the shepherd of Hermas. that's what Hermas academy is all about you click on it click on the button that takes you to our channel go down to a section on our channel that says playlists you should watch there's a few of them on there that says playlist that you should watch and there's one on there that talks about similar tools and talks about the shepherd of Hermas. Check that one out. Like I said, me and my wife and I have gone through verse by verse out of the entire book. We've got a lot of understanding out of that book. Maybe you'll go listen to the book first or read it first. But come back over there on our channel. We're going to unlock some stuff and make you understand some stuff you may not have known about the Shepherd of Hermas. But anyway, let's get back to this study. Jumping down here to chapter 57, which is called Reversion and Renewal in All Human Areas. Verse 65 says, Ancient Babel condemned you to this division of the peoples and races, but the construction of my spiritual temple in the hearts of humanity shall free you from that restitution and bring you to love one another truly. See, now this is this is probably the most important thing, you know, a, 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 that you can understand about going into the tribulation and surviving the tribulation is love for one another love your brother you remember they asked the messiah what was the most important commandment and he said love the father and love your brother that's it we have to love one another and you know we ain't just talking about a verbal love with our mouth we're actually talking about doing stuff for each other that's what it's going to take to survive the tribulation when things start going really bad for us out here for humanity stuff start coming out of the sky the earth start shaking you know all of these diseases and stuff it is our effort to try to help our brother that's going to get us help from the angelic world that's going to save us if that makes sense if i'm sitting here by myself and i ain't thinking about nobody by myself why is any angels going to try to help me but if i get up and go out here and try to you know get these rubble off of these people or try to make them feel better or pray for them and such then the angels will see me as a tool that they can use in order to materialize their good deeds and so they will actually help me to go out and do this stuff we have to help each other if we want to survive that's the ticket to surviving this tribulation is to help one another all right i don't want to get too preachy so let me go on going down here in chapter 58 which is the kingdom of the peace of christ and the culmination of creation we're going to jump all the way down here to verse 25. He says, I am building a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when it has been constructed, the gathering places, temples and sanctuaries will have ceased to exist. 
and will have lost their reason for existing and as will their symbols rites and traditions that will be when you feel my presence and greatness you shall recognize that your temple is the universe and as your form of worship the love of your fellow man see now he's pulling to the post earthquake time that time after all of these buildings have been shaken down and stuff but you know what it's talking about here is have to, uh, after all of those buildings those brick and mortar churches and every other building on the planet has been shaken down and have no reason to exist anymore then we're going to be having the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit for all of humanity all of humanity again it's available to you now for those who want to who want to who want to go into the temple now you can do so now uh, by way of your spirit to spirit communication just prepare first do charitable deeds uh get in tune with the law be baptized again that kind of thing but you know for the rest of the world there's coming a day when you know this is going to be the only temple around the other one's going to be no no reason for symbols and rites and traditions and all of that kind of stuff it's, it's all going away there's going to be nothing left but the spiritual temple which is the universe Jumping down here in chapter 63, verse 77 says, I am preparing you for the time when you no longer hear my word. For the people will then call you the people without God, the people without temples. For you will have no regal places to offer me worship, nor celebrate in ceremonies, nor seek me in images. See, this is this is why you know you have to reject the doctrine that we're not supposed to be doing or honoring the feast days and such because we don't have a temple see that was solomon's temple like i said you know the father's temple is on our hearts it's in our conscience that's where we're supposed to be worshiping him at he, you know in the past today and in the future that's where we're supposed to be worshiping the father at um it says you know in the third testament how you know they kind of needed those brick and mortar temple temples to give them an example or something to go by but that's all it was it, it it wasn't it wasn't real you know it you know for lack of a better word it is that 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 invisible temple that's real and so what he's talking about here is how you know when those individuals who are fascinated and, and you know by these brick and mortar temples see you guys that he's preparing when he sees us who he's preparing who don't need these brick and mortar temples they're going to call us the people without god it's like hey they, they don't have worship centers and they don't have regal places to offer worship they ain't you know doing all these big uh ceremonies and they don't have big idols and crucifixes walking around this is a different kind of people he's talking about us but he's also talking about us in the third temple See down right here in chapter 63, which is called teachings for the congregations and all the disciples of Christ. This is what I was talking about. He says, for now, understand that as long as men do not achieve complete spirituality, they will need their material temples and will need to place before their eyes the forms and images that make them feel my presence. So, you know, before we become spiritualized individuals and again, the way we become spiritualized is by way of our conscience. We have to get in tune with the law. But, but let me add something else to that. I alluded to a little bit earlier. And that's getting baptized. See, the, what baptism does is it removes the sin from our life. It takes, it gives us a clean slate. And by having that clean slate, we're actually able to become spiritual beings in that moment. Now, if you don't understand that, like I didn't, first few times I was baptized, I ran right back out there and got dirty again. But once we, once we are clean, we can become spiritual individuals. We can take advantage of our conscience and such. And then we don't need these material temples, you know, or these images or that other kind of stuff. We, we, we can, we can feel his presence inside of us. So. So think about getting baptized again if you if you've done so already if you haven't done so at all you know understand that it is the cleansing of the sins and so after you've done so don't go back and dirty yourself back up take advantage of that repentance take advantage of that clean state that clean slate that you have anyway I'm getting preachy again 
Jump down here to 209. It says, he who conceives of me as spirit fills me inside him, around him, and in all that surrounds him, because he himself has become my temple. This is talking about once you become spiritualized. That, that is the thing that the Father wants the most of us is for us to become spiritualized individuals. That's basically what is going to, that's basically the meaning of life when you think about it, is for, you know, for us to come down here and learn how to become spiritual beings. Then we can go on to the higher mansions as spiritual beings and do bigger and greater stuff. But as long as we're down here stuck in our materialism, you know, we may have to keep coming down here until we get over that part. 210 says, offer me spiritual worship. Do not be like those who raise temples and altars gilded with gold and precious stones or who carry out great pilgrimages and punish themselves with hard and cruel flagellation and who offer prayers and devotions prostrate on their knees, but who have still been unable to confide in their hearts to me. I have come to touch them through their conscience and to say who speaks saying what he does and proclaims it to be four winds has no merit before the celestial father so don't be like those guys you know building brick and mortar temples they weren't i mean you can you pay attention to that stuff for entertainment purposes only i know i do i i i'll be interested to know you know what they're doing over there only because I believe it's going to be a huge war, you know, to break out. You know, there's a there's a dome of the rock sitting on top of that temple mount where they want to build that third temple at. And, you know, those Muslim people that are in charge of that, they, they ain't going to give it up so easily. So I'm kind of wondering, OK, how are you guys going to pull this off? Are you going to build the temple in the wrong place? You know, you're not going to build it on the same place that, you know, Solomon had his temple. I think it was important. Solomon didn't. He did. He, he had some angelic help picking that spot. You know, or are they going to somehow, you know, build it on top of the Dome of the Rock? It's kind of like a soap opera. Verse 357 says, even if there were no religions in the world, still it would be enough to concentrate on the depths of your beings to find my presence in your inner temple. So we don't even need religion. You know, religion seems to block us from our spiritualization a lot of times anyway, you know, especially... You know, a lot of the churches, you know, around here, they seem to tell us that we are not supposed to be following the laws. We're not supposed to be uh, following the commandments and such. You know, I went in there the other day and I was trying to tell them how the Feast of Passover, you know, uh, will prevent us from getting these plagues. Like you read over there in the book of Jubilees, chapter 49. And I was telling them how, you know, we're supposed to keep the Feast of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And them people smoothly blew me off talking about they was going to do some other feast around Easter time and all of that. And it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> no wonder you guys don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the spiritual temple. You want nothing to do with the Father's laws. How, how, can, you, how can you expect to, you know, have or understand this third temple when you don't understand the first one or the second one which were built around his laws you know those, those laws and rules were important they were for a reason and the reason was so that to help us become spiritualized individuals and so now we can see the real temple the real third temple being built all right let's jump down here this third testament is something else guys now down here in chapter 64 which is the uh, prophecies for the seven nations. It gives prophecies for uh, seven different nations like Japan and Russia and England and Italy and the United States and Germany and one other I can't think of right now. But it, it, here's the one for the United States. And um, this one ain't a bad one compared to the other one I've, I've, I've haven't really done you know much by way of commentary on this chapter yet but you can find you know if you jump on our channel and put in uh, prophecies um, for the seven nations you you can you can hear those on our channel but the one for the United States doesn't sound that bad you know compared to the other ones some of them sound like they're getting nuked some of them sound like they're getting plagued some I mean, some of them going through wars and stuff but over here like right here in 24 he says he touches our conscience he's going to touch your conscience and you know that's 
that's, that that don't sound too bad, you know, when you think opposed to a nuclear bomb or whatever. But right here, in verse 23, he says, continue. And yet I ask, when will my seed put down roots in you? When will you topple your golden calf in your tower of Babel so that you may build the true tower of the Lord? See, that's that white stone stuff we was talking about over there, that worldly stuff we're talking about, this golden calf and this tower of Babel here. He's telling us that we're still worshiping these. And it shouldn't be too much surprising, you know, if you start thinking about the stock market and you start thinking about how our religions um, uh, put on us all of these, you know, pagan feasts like Christmas and Easter and Halloween and all of those feasts that, you know, from, you know, from, you know, uh, uh, back there with Nimrod's day when he was building the Tower of Babel. It doesn't surprise us at all. But what he's telling us here is we have to put that stuff away. We have to put down the golden calf, you know, which I believe surrounds our materialism or our mammon or, you know, something like that. And then the Tower of Babel, which is those uh, false gods and, you know, worshiping other gods. And then once we do that, then we can build the true temple. That's basically what is what has to go on for all of humanity. But like we said a few minutes ago, we got an earthquake for that. The earthquake is going to is going to knock down that golden calf It's going to knock down that tower of Babel, too. And then the whole world, the whole United States is going to be able to uh, build this true tower. Now, this one here comes out of chapter 65, which is talking about parables. And again, you can see a video we did over there on our channel talking about the parables. Um, still waiting to do the commentary on it, but we did post it up so you can hear it. Just look for look at our channel, look for parables, do a search for in the fight parables on YouTube. It should pop up. But let's jump down here in 65. It says, I love you. And if you take a step away from me, I take a step towards you. And if you close the doors of your temple against me, I will call at them until you open them for me to enter. See, this is our father talking here. And um, just like we have to do with our children, we can't give up on them. We have to love them. We have to pray for them. We have to wait for them to, you know, make right decisions or whatever. Um, that's the way the father is for us. So if we close the door to our temple to him, we won't get rid of our tower of Babel and our golden calf or whatever. He's going to wait on us. What he says, he will call at them until we open them for him. But, you know, at the same time, that earthquake approaches and we want to be spiritualized before that earthquake gets here. I promise you that. Now, this is probably the most important thing you should have got out of this class. Now, for most of you, ain't surprised that it's a third temple built on the hearts and minds. You may have got some stuff out of the, dealing with the conscience. I know I did. But for the majority of people, it's the fulfillment of the law and how the law and the temple go hand in hand. For those who want to be involved in the third temple and don't want nothing to do with the law, you're fooling yourself. And for those who want to have something to do with the third temple, but they don't want to have nothing to do with loving each other, you're fooling yourself as well. It's by doing these two things do you give tribute to the creator and master. You can check our channel for rules and stuff like that. It's coming out of the third testament. We do a lot of help for helping people to understand what the covenant is and what the laws are and, and how we're supposed to be following those. Um, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Hit the subscribe button and that bell button so you can get future classes that we put out. Leave a comment if you haven't done so already. Any input you may have or any questions or concerns, feel free to put those below. Pray for us and shalom.